When I spoke earlier, I talked about the great relationships we have uh, with the employers. This is John Kendall from Oski Blue. He, um, it's just amazing all they do for us. And they have, many of our students have had internships at their location in... Probably eight. Yeah. Wow. So they do everything. They've helped us in mock interviews. They do workshops. They're mentors. They're mentors, employer panel. They come to the job fair. I mean, everything. And he's here to talk with us today. And if you have questions, I'm sure he'd be happy to answer. So. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yay. Uh, maybe we might earn a laugh at the end. We'll see. Mm -hmm. You will. Um, so like she mentioned, John Kendall Dosky Blue, uh, they, they kind of gave me three main topics to talk about. Entrepreneurship, uh, networking, you know, and, and creating a brand of getting yourself out there, um, and how to have a better, strong online presence. And then also I wanted to talk about uh, just claiming your social media assets and improving those. But really, today it's just open form. I expect you to keep eating if you need to do something. I won't be offended if you're eating or checking a, a text message. We're all uh, busy people. But I want you anytime just to raise your hand with a question. So that not at the end, like, I gotta remember or it's off topic. Really, it's better if I'm just answering your questions at any time. But really, I, I'm pretty loose. Out of those three main things, is there one that you prefer me to start on? Entrepreneurship, uh, optimizing uh, uh, your social media, or networking? Any of those, is there someone go, hey, I really... Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Yeah. 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 All right. So she raised her hand first. So let's give you a little background about entrepreneurship. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of our story. And I mean, we work with companies, uh, one, I mean, probably three a week that are, are just starting up a, a company. And so hopefully I can uh, avoid you from some of the pitfalls that a lot of businesses make. Um, a little history about Oski Blue. We've been around for four and a half years. And we were uh, the true uh, definition of entrepreneurship. I called my friend Troy that I went to uh, high school with. We'd you know, just gone separate ways for about 12 years. And I said, hey, let's start up a company out in Tyler, Texas. Ooh, and uh, yeah, he's Texas, we've got any East Texas fans out there. And we wanted to just start an online uh, directory where we just sell ads online to people. And as we started to do that, you know, I, when I went to school, I could date myself. I graduated in high school in 99. So there was no internet, really? Yeah, yeah. 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 Come on now. All right, all right. Okay, you're younger than yeah, I thought. Yeah. So, but to give, but, but at the same time, to, to think about that, internet had been around for three years. There was no Facebook. When I went to college, you know, I, I tell people, who like, um, I work with the Boy Scouts, right? What do you do? I was like, well, I teach people how to, you know, manage their Facebook, their Twitter, their YouTube, and, What's crazy, when I went to college, those things didn't even exist. Yeah. And it's, it's something to prepare yourself. The, the jobs that you might be working for five years truly may not even be created. Um, and there's a good video, uh, What You Don't Know, YouTube video. It says about 70% of all jobs that will be created in the next five years haven't even been created yet. It's just, I mean, who would have known five years ago that Facebook would provide, I don't know, uh, 100,000 plus jobs? It just didn't even exist. So um, I'll go on a few different tangents. So here we are, we're selling ads for, for online. And while I'm there, someone's like, hey, um, with this Facebook thing, you know, this is four and a half years ago, like, do you, do you know how to set up a Facebook profile? There's one great tool that any of you can adapt is Google Things. So here I am that I didn't even have a Facebook profile yet. And so they're like, I don't know how to do it. So I literally just Google how to set up a Facebook page. And I just write in front of them, I go there and set it up in about 30 minutes. And it was great. He's, oh, thank you. And I said, great. I go to my next appointment. He's like, oh, can you set this up? I was like, well, I've got to get my next appointment. And he goes, well, I'll pay you to set it up. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and, and, and what's crazy is he goes, well, it's going to take me, it will take me five, six hours. And so I was like, all right. And I was just doing the math. So I was like, well, if it takes that long, you know, I'll charge you $300. And he goes, that's all great. And you would be shocked. We had people to set up a profile. Right when came out, yeah. so, well, did you say you lived in East Texas? Mm -hmm. So if you know East Texas, they're just about five years behind technology. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then I had someone once asked me, they're like, do you think this internet thing will stay around? <laughs> True story, unfortunately. So they saw, what I did is we saw an opportunity. And so really quickly, in the first six months of our business, we go, Okay, people are needing something as setting up a, a Facebook profile. 
and didn't have, you know, it was in school and education, but literally just Googled how to do it, and you find a need that people don't want to do themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we found. We found someone that didn't want to spend 30 minutes on a computer, and to them it was, they were worth the pay $300 for me to take 30 minutes and set it up. Mm -hmm. But, and I'm telling you, you could, I, I feel confident here, even in Frisco, you could probably charge 150, close 200 for people that just don't want to set it up. I'll show you how to set up. We can do it in about five minutes. <laughs> but you will find people that, you know, they just, they'd rather have someone else do it for multiple reasons. Time, stress, aren't great with computers. And this is probably the biggest one. They're worried they'll screw it up. And people will pay a premium for the uh, not wanting to screw something up. That's why we go to mechanic. We can all, really, if we Google it, we can change our own oil. I mean, it's not too difficult. You know, you buy two or three uh, simple tools, but it's gonna take us two hours, but we don't want to, you know, <coughs> last thing is break our engine, so we're willing to pay a, an expert to do it. And that's kind of the same in entrepreneurship. So I'm just giving you my example, but hopefully your brain's turn is going, what are people not wanting to do, and you know, I, I use this word loosely, are lazy and in go, <laughs> I want someone else to do, and find that niche. So that's what happened. Really quickly, I started just doing Facebook pages and created that, and then we found out people go, oh, you need a website? You know, you know, we build hundreds and hundreds of websites now. I remember going, I'm sitting with Facebook, he goes, do you do websites? And I don't know how to build websites to this day. And I go, yeah, we build websites. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's like, well, I got a quote, you know, someone quoted me 1800 to build a website. I was like, well, we'll do it for 1700 <laughs> And so I like went home, called my partner, I go, we need to find someone to build a website. <laughs> and then, you know, and there's, there's great resources out there. Um, you know, but you want to educate yourself. Um, you can find from people if it would be Craigslist, uh, there's different forms out there. One that I would caution, but you can use it. Anyone heard of Odesk? Mm -hmm. Odesk, if, if used in caution, can be, be good. We don't use them anymore, but initially you find someone that are, are willing to go, hey, they're just trying to learn or have skills, and they'll do it for, you know, build a website for, you know, $1,200, and you know, we make 500 And so you, you find those opportunities where people go, I need it and how can you fulfill it? Um, and that's some of the things in, with regards to entrepreneurship. As I continue, any questions so far? I, I always love questions, but uh, that's simple. So uh, our process went from, we did that, so we started setting up social media things. I started just doing a little bit of, of reading, and it's, I always tell people, you just need to be two months ahead of everyone else. Um, and it's just those that, I take a little time out to read articles that have just come out. Because if I go read an article that came out today, Majority of you are not researching Facebook, but you can find the same resources I can. Um, so it, people will come to like, Jeff, my partner, the reason why he's not here today, he's teaching a, another class of about 45 people that are going, hey, I'd rather just hear it from a, an individual rather than read. And that would jump us in a whole other topic about YouTube. We live in a world where no one wants to read anymore. Right. And I'm not saying that's good, but I'm just telling you it's factual. We'd rather watch a 30 second clip on telling me what to do than just have this article right in front of us. And so we're finding that YouTube's a powerful tool or speaking engagements just like this because people go, just tell it. You know, I just, we live in a world of instant gratification. I don't want to sit down and, and read a, a 10 page or even 200 page book. I want to sit in a seminar for an hour and just tell it to me. And I want hands on experience. And so there, there's a need for that in whatever industry. If you want to do some type of programming, if you want to uh, do crafting projects, you know, rather than just sell it online, people just want someone to actually show them how to build that crafting project. And it just recreates, uh, I call it a leads funnel of, of continual business. I mean, our business has, we've been very blessed, it's taken off. But a lot of it's not because we just, um, you know, 10 times fold increased our client base. It's more offered more services to the clients that trust us. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge thing. If you want to have power, I've learned, it's not get more and more. You've got to get new clients, new clients. Because if, if that philosophy is you're basically, your, your mental um, philosophy is, I'm just going to turn them over. I'm just going to do something, I'm going to get paid, and I move on. Uh, the philosophy we took was, well, if we make these clients happy, if I do a great job with Facebook, I do a great job with the website, well then, we have other services off of that same person. We can manage their, we call it SEO, we can write blogs for them, we can create YouTube videos, we can do their Google ad management, we can make their site responsive, we can do their email marketing. And rather than us just going, we need new and new clients, if your clients trust and like you, they'll just... There's no reason to go somewhere else. They'll come right back to you. Are you people local? Yes. So yeah, we're based in Frisco, Texas. So we moved uh, our office here 
almost three years ago. Tell why. Yeah, why? It's wonderful. So for, for two reasons. We started off in East Texas. So, and here's an there, because I bounced around, so I, I love questions. Um, we started in East Texas. East Texas is about 150,000 people. And we kind of, <coughs> within the first six months, we, our first name was EastTexas.biz. That was our company name. Mm -hmm. And then we started getting clients in what Dallas. Happened? And they don't like, you know, they're like, oh, East Texas, that's you know, small backwoods. So we're like, all right, let's change our name. So we're like, well, we'll call it Texas Biz Solutions. So now we can cover the whole state of Texas. Well, that was great for about another year. Well, then we started getting clients in North Carolina and Alabama. And we, one day we went to one of our clients um, in North Carolina and we said, hey, can you give us a referral? Um, because, you know, we're doing great work. And they go, do you want to know the honest truth? I told someone about you. And when I said I work with a company called Texas Biz, they're like, Texas? I don't want to work for a company from Texas. <laughs> no. And so what we found out is they, they was just, you know, uh, no, people just don't want to work with people from other states. Mm -hmm. And so we go, all right, we need a new marketing strategy. We need to not have, you know, a, a city or state or city. We don't even want a state. We need to come up with a name that no one will be offended and we can just market all across the board. So my partner, I believe it or not, we're not marketing guys, even though it's our company is marketing. <laughs> and so I, I went to my partner, he goes, we, we need to rename the company. This is about a little over two and a half years ago. And I said, Troy, you know what? Just name the company whatever you want. Just make the website blue so I can wear blue clothes, because that's my favorite color. And so the next day, he has a real dog. Um, let's just see if it's real dog. Uh, oh, there you go. Perfect. So, that, that, so he has a French bulldog. It's a, believe it or not, it's actually a blue French bulldog. It has it's just a tint. It's a gray, blue. Mm -hmm. And so his dog's name's Oski. And so he goes, all right, let's just name the company Oski Blue. So that's how we got our marketing. Oh, There's no, no marketing strategy behind that. But ironically, it's been great. People are like, oh, or we do love pets. I've got a toy blue. Everyone's like, oh, you're pet lovers. And we get a lot of clients because you know, they're like, you love pets. Mm -hmm. And it, it just it works on all facets. It doesn't affect. So if you are going to be an entrepreneur, don't name it Frisco uh, Plumber. <laughs> I mean, it, and even though you only work at Frisco, you just never know where your company is going to go because you might start working in Prosper, in Little Elm, in the Colony, Plano. So I, I, I encourage you not to name your company Frisco this, Prosper this, Texas. You just don't know. I mean, when we were when we were small, we just assumed that you know the biggest we were going to get. You know, our eyeballs were just or East Texas company. When we got Texas, even we messed up once. We're like. Texas is huge. We'll never outgrow Texas. You know, but you just don't know. And so I, that's one thing I would caution you against because that costs us a lot of money. I mean, each, well, the second was a lot more. I mean, I'm just guessing on rebranding, eight, ten thousand dollars we spent to just, I mean, all those shirts just sit in my closet. You know, when, when I wear them, people are like, what's that company? And I was like, and like, oh, no, I can't. And just ran pins. If any of you want text to business plans, I've got 2,000. 2,000 are yours. They're yours. So, anyways, that was a long answer to your question. Yes, we're based. We moved to Frisco because we started getting a lot of business in Dallas. And so we found out here it's been a great market for us. And we've been blessed ever since. You know, we can't keep up with the business in this area. Does that answer your question? Let's get all those great 5.0 Google reviews. Google reviews? So Google reviews, I, I always tell people, this is my slogan, I, I would take one Google review over 500 Facebook likes any day of the week. If you said, hey, I can get you 500 likes or just one Google review, I would take a Google review. Facebook likes are extremely overrated. If we want to go into that, let's jump into that. But how I got these, um, I would say out of, there's 88 reviews. I'm going to guess 40 of them are from our current clients. We asked for them. We, like you say, hey, if you're, we're providing great service, we really appreciate the nicest way you can say thanks is with us a Google review. And then the other thing we'll do is a, a, a class like this and that Jeff's teaching, at the end of our class, we'll say, hey, we hope, you know, we don't sell any. I've given over 200 seminars, and in 200, you may not believe this, I've never sold anything. At the end of it, I go, hey, I just want to give education, but the nicest way you can say thank you is at the end of my class, go to Google and type in Oski Blue and click on write a review and write a review about our company. And that's how we've been able to get those reviews. Um, so those are important. No, they, they really are. I mean, just uh, <laughs> just because he's bring up the topic. <coughs> um, 
I'll tell you, and you could do this in your own company. I mean, Google reviews are free. We didn't pay, we didn't pay anyone anything for them. Uh, website. So, more, I'm not tooting our horn. This is just to educate what he was talking about. I typed in for, uh, website design Frisco, Texas. So here's all of our competitors. And look how many Google reviews they have. I mean, we get clients that won't even shop somewhere else. They'll call us and they go, they'll tell us, you know, we always ask, hey, how'd you hear about us? They go, well, you're the only one that people are even talking about. Wow. I mean, it, our, our competition has took in no effort. These are large corporations, too. These are not like mom and pop shops have made no effort to get Google reviews. They are extremely powerful. I mean, we could stop today, <coughs> never ask for another review, and probably never, no one ever catch us. So, and we'll take a break while I case our phone. So yes, to answer your question, um, we just we, we go out and we ask for them because um, they're tough to get. You have to have a Google, a Gmail account. And people have to, you can't do it on a mobile phone. You can't do it on a tablet. I mean, they have to be at their desktop. And some people don't even have desktops anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, something you've got to do. Did you have anything to follow up with that? Okay. So um, jumping in, let's, when he talked about Facebook, I want to bounce around. Am I answering some of your questions regarding entrepreneurship? Yes. Uh, what we did, my partner and I, is we go, if we just work hard, I mean, in any business, we're just like, if we work hard, this will work out. I worked a lot of hours. You know, I have a very patient wife where that, that first year, every day I could look you in the eye and say, I talked to no less than 70 businesses. So you know, he was the marketing guy, the accounting books, you know, he had an accounting degree. And my job is to bring home 70 business cards every day. And so I would knock on every door and get a business card. That's just like mine that says, all right, I don't, I don't stop talking to business until I have 70 business cards. I mean, it's just getting out there. It's just, I, my philosophy is it's not like so much as selling, it's just a numbers game. As where I would stumble across people that needed your service. It wasn't more go, hey, I'm just gonna knock on five people and I'm gonna aggressively pressure them into my product or service. Because mine, basically, I'd go in there, hey, do you need a, a website? No? Okay. No, I didn't want to you know, exert my energy. I didn't want to pressure anyone into it. The reason why we have great reviews is we don't go, oh, well, you don't need a website, but I'm going to convince you why you have to have one. If, if it's not a good fit, I would just, and then when someone goes, I've been thinking about it, then I would exert all my energy into that person when they said there was an interest. And that's where I would just not waste any time. I mean, I might go <coughs> 16 people in a row, just no, 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 no. And then I go, I'm thinking about it, and I go, all right. Well, I'm glad I got those people out of the way so that I could focus my time and energy with you. Um, so we didn't have a, a plan. Now, over time, we did. We, you know, and it's, something, it's one of those growing things. The wrong thing to, a lot of people do when they come to us, they have this great idea. And they're just like, they'll spend, here's a, a perfect example. This is why I think we've been successful. Is when we meet with a client, they want to spend about, well, we'll just do a 100% scale. They want to spend 80%, if not 90%, on the design of the website. And they want to spend 10% of the time on optimizing it, making it be found on Google. And so I, I would meet with clients, and so what I'd tell them, i go, all right, we're going to budget out 10 hours that will work with you. We can spend nine hours thinking of looking over this design and just making it so you just, you're in love with it, and then we'll spend one hour trying to make it so people find it on Google. And then when I explained that, everybody was like, well, no, I want to be found Google. <laughs> but it's like, your website, I always tell people, Google doesn't have eyeballs. So what I mean by that, you could have a $5,000 website, it's beautiful, and it'll be on page 30 of Google for the rest of your life. <laughs> Where someone can spend $50 on a website, and it's optimized, and it's on the first page of Google. And so when we meet with clients, we go, all right, do, if you're looking for someone just to focus on design, 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 we might not be a good fit. But if all you care about is being on the top of Google, well, let's spend nine hours on how to put in keywords, keyword research, optimizing it, title tags, H1 tags, so that it's at the top. And then we'll just make it you know, a decent, good-looking website. Because <coughs> I don't go to a website and go, oh, man, just, I don't like the look. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the reason why we don't go to page two is we're not going for look. We're just, I just want, when I type in auto repair, I want you to pop up, and I want to see your phone number and where you're located. You know, they don't go, hey, honey, before we get the transmission fixed, look how good looking this one is. And this yeah, one. That's true. But, but it's so natural internally, you're, we always want to say, well, it doesn't represent me well. I can't tell you how many businesses I've seen fail because we, we and in their business, I watch them just talk about the branding and the look and all this, 
<laughs> it won't ever matter if you never sell anything. I mean, I, I've seen clients, they just never got off the ground. They're just, they spent hour after hour, hour, look, look, look. And I was like, I think if you just go out and sold something, how much better off you would have been. Uh, is that kind Thank of you. Yeah. So with that, let's jump into Facebook, because he brought up a point just so that I'm on that topic. Any other questions regarding entrepreneurship? If you want to talk just a little bit about what you talk to our students about, how you structured that, because a lot of the people in this room, they're from different states, different okay. colleges, and they're our partners, and they haven't done what we did with you guys Okay. Yet. Yeah, so uh, what I found is it's good to find partners in uh, entrepreneurship. Is uh, there, in, in our company, there's three owners. And initially, there was uh, Troy, my partner. He is a marketing guru, kind of guru. He's really good at marketing. He's really good at accounting. He has a accounting degree. He used to own a bookkeeping company. Um, and so he knew the number side of it. Me, I would say I'm more of the sales type. I just, I enjoy talking to people. I, when I have to be behind a desk, that's why I do a lot of these. You know, and it's like, all right, well, thank you, thanks. Like, it's better than being at my desk. <laughs> and so I, I, I enjoy just talking with people about anything. If you want to talk about something, I, let's talk about it. So I, they were really good. Because the, the wrong thing to do is if you're by yourself, I caution you going to in business with yourself because um, it's yourself and you're like, hey, I'm great, I'm a salesman. Well, you'll find out real quick, you're, you now have to be the bookkeeper, you need to be the marketing person, you need to be the IT person. Um, I mean, you're just like, oh, you, you've got to be the cleaner, you, and all these things, and you're like, ah, oh, I sold all this stuff, but now I don't know how to fulfill it. And so you really should find someone that's almost opposite of you. Mm -hmm. it, it's a crazy sound, because if you, if you get two buddies, you're like, man, we're both just great at selling, we can sell. Well, it might succeed for a year, and then you're like, our business fell apart because there was no structure behind it. And then I ran into companies that just have this great just business person. He's got great ideas and sits there. And, you know, a lot of these people, and it's like, well, now you got to go sell it. And I, well, find someone else to do it. So find a partner that. So that was the initial one. And we that lasted us a while. <coughs> that third partner was more of that IT. We actually, you know, Jeff, he's a developer. He's a programmer. And so we all have our, our different talents. And the reason why I think our business has been successful is because with all my heart, I cannot do what Jeff does. <laughs> and with all my heart, I can't do what Troy does. And I feel they feel they can't do what I do. But this was where I see a lot of companies fail. We always hear, you know, was it 90% of businesses fail within the first five years? And that's like 75 in the first year. It's because if you have two sales guys, you're always going, I can do your job. You know, you're a sales guy, I'm a sales guy, I can do your job. Why? What are you bringing to the table? But we always were like, I need you, you need me. And so finding that, finding that relationship is pretty important. And it's uh, crazy as it's someone different. You know, we're working with a bicycle shop right now, is they go sell orders and then they go build the bicycle you know, seats. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of the wrong approaches, and we're just, it's a business we live in, is they don't go, all right, hey man, I can great deal on bicycle seats. Let me go buy up you know, uh, 10,000 of them. And I've got it in store and I've done the design and then go out and sell it. I mean, our site was just okay looking best. We're just like, let's sell service, you know, find those few that, that like us and build that, you know, that trust and client base, and then take care of this stuff. You don't have to spend money up front. We were running so lean. We were working out of our home. I mean, we just, we would barter wherever there's opportunities to barter. Um, and I mean, your, your service, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, uh, or a gym membership. I'm, oh, I don't go to the gym anymore. It's been here, but <laughs> five years ago, my wife's like, "Hey, you know what? I, I'd like to get a gym membership." And so I was like, ah, "We don't have money to go spend sixty dollars a month on a membership." So I was like, "Well, I went to the gym. I go, do you, you need, need a website?" website? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, we were on a website. And they're like, "Well, actually, we do." And I was like, "All right." So then, that same capital, then I could put it towards things that I'm not able to barter. I mean, I can't tell you how many things. Date nights. Um, you know, what my wife's like, let's go to the movies. And we were poor, and so I went to the movie theater. And I was like, well, I know you're a large corporate, you don't need it, but can I like just do a video for you? So just literally grabbed a, a cheap phone, $99, uh, I mean a flip camera, shot a little video, optimized it for them, and then they gave us like 400, I don't know, it was that much, it was 300 tickets. Wow. And so we were able to, we oh my God. so no, we took our church to it, we went to the <laughs> for, for, for the next while, we were doing movies for free. And so bartering is a great tool, because then that same capital, you know, that 80 bucks we spent on a date, I was able to use that capital and then put it towards something. I mean, you wouldn't believe the things. My wife just 
this last week got glasses. She goes, John, my eyes are hurting. I need sunglasses. And so I went and I just, I went and made like five calls. I was like, hey, I found your site. It's not ranking. Can we build your website? And she's like, oh yeah. I go, well, to top it off, how about we barter? My wife needs glasses. <laughs> and they're like, when, when you say oh, barter, you can do it, eh? yeah, it's, people will do that all day. And so it was, that's really what got our company that just they didn't have that cash. I mean, Does it was. leading to a lot of future business? Oh, oh no. So the, they, they, they became paying clients. Um, it led to other business. I created relationships. And then other doors I would have never got in. So there were some like large businesses that, you know, they're like, I'm not, you know, you haven't been around long and all this, but if you're willing to barter, they're a lot more apt to do that. I mean, setting up like an attorney and we're like, hey, we need to get our legal documents. We've been around a year and we hadn't even have our legal documents put into order. And we're like, we should probably get this. And so we're like, we found an attorney and he wouldn't give us time today. I go, well, what if we build your website and then you'll do our legal documents? Like, all right, I can do that. So now all of a sudden it looks like we did this, or it looks like now we did this very credible attorney in the city. We did his website. And so it led people go, wow, you work with them? Like, how'd you, even, how'd you even get in the door? I mean, we did business, but you know, they're like, hey. so it just, it raised our level of credibility. And so that's something that we did. And so just, you mean, just save, save your money. I mean, find what you need. I mean, I could go on endless. It's a joke in our house. You name it, a barter. <laughs> <laughs> Auto mechanic too. I mean, uh, go to Oski, oskyu.com. We'll see if the internet and use cook on upcoming events. And we teach about two free classes a month. And what like Jeff right now is teaching one on Google, local uh, listing, social media, and then a uh, million dollar marketing company. Oh, where's your app? Pop up. Um, he teaches ones on like WordPress classes, uh, setting up an e commerce site, and they're all completely free. And uh, you can do the opposite. I'm telling you to do our marketing strategy. Um, and we use Meetup. Is, is anyone not know what Meetup is? Meetup.com is all of you should be on it. Think of it as a, a hybrid between Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, what it is, you know, I first, uh, Troy told me about it five years ago. He goes, I was like, Meetup, is that a dating site? He goes, no, it's just a, a networking site. And so what we found is you can go to Meetup, and we live in a great area where there are 500 different Meetups just in the Dallas area. And you can type in networking <coughs> within 10 miles of Frisco, and it will show you, I don't know, 100 network groups in this area. And almost all of them are free. Basically, you can go to, they meet at Two Brothers at Thursday morning at 7 a.m. for an hour, and 30 people get together, and they'll just, each person gets like a one minute elevator pitch, and then you just network with people. And there'll be people in, uh, in other industries. And then you can go do another one in, in uh, Little Elm, you can go one in the colony. And there's all these, and it's a great way to get out and meet people uh, for a low cost and to even build your brand. People are like, man, I see you all over. Because rather than, you know, not, not knocking doors is a bad thing, but I was seeing one person at a time. Well, I go to a meetup, and now I'm getting in a room with 40 people. And then two hours later, I go to another meetup group, and I'm in another room with 40 people. And you're kind of just getting yourself out of there. And so we've used that as now it's intertwined with our, like, Oski Blue University, where we just teach these classes, and now there's probably 800 people on our meetup group that now we created one and we consistently have about 45, 50 people come to our classes just to, to learn and, and network and we're the facilitators of that and it creates more credibility when you're running the meeting. Not that it's bad to be in the audience, but you know, it's, it's just a, a free tool that you can be using. And that's the right, last thing in entrepreneurship, unless there's more questions, is use all your free tools. Set up a Facebook profile, it's free. Set up Twitter, use YouTube. Um, if, you, if you have time to build your own website, you know, on WordPress, if you have time, you know, there, there are uh, tools you can do to build your own. Um, this is a print. Your first start, you can get your first 500 business cards for free. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we, we did all of that. I mean, if you saw how lean we ran our business, you know, it's not like, oh, I got to get the expensive stuff, got to ex- do all the expensive design and all these and spend uh, $40,000. <laughs> and then like, right, well, now I got to go sell and I got a huge debt. You know, we were very blessed in the five years we've been around. I don't think we've ever been in debt. Um, and there, there's always, you know, the exception. There might be something, but you know, I mean, knock on wood, we've been very blessed. <laughs> there's probably not in here. No, nah, we're not in here. <laughs> but we took that approach. <laughs> Out of curiosity, anyone a big Facebook user? Just because that one's been that gentleman asked uh, about Facebook. Any anyone love Facebook? Think of Chase. All right, all right. We got two people. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, in with regards to business, I would say spend as little as time on Facebook. 
for your business. And I'm not saying personal, I'm not including that, but we'll talk about that later. <coughs> but in regards to business, I think Facebook is one of your weakest tools. I'm gonna tell you our personal story. So when we first started our company five years ago, Facebook was the hottest thing to slice bread. Remember, it's just like everyone's starting to get the icons. Well, you gotta get it on a business card. You gotta put it on your storefront. You gotta get Facebook, you gotta get Facebook. And we were the same way. It was before they even went public. And we were in East Texas, and we pounded it. We set up a little kiosk in the mall. I, I would go to you literally, I'd say, here's a candy bar if you like our page. And I'd watch you put it on your phone and you like it, and I'd give you a candy bar. And I'll tell you why we did that. Because everyone that liked our page, I know for the rest of your life that every time I posted something, you would see it. And, right? That's what I wanted. So we had 4,800 likes. In East Texas, we were the third largest Facebook page. And we were outranking mm -hmm. even the news stations. But to us, it was worth it. It was totally worth it because I knew we had 4,800 people that every time I said, who needs a website, all 4,800 would see it. All right, we spent about you know, five, $6,000 just like, who wants it, who wants it? Because we know you're a client, you're a, and not a client, but you're a, in, uh, you're a lead for life. You know, you're, we'll be able to be in front of you. Well, then Facebook went public three and a half years ago. Everyone remember that? Mm -hmm. It started off at like $35 at the IOP, and then it dropped the <laughs> next day at 27 and then the next day they took my money. I'll tell you how they did that. So it went out to everyone. Well, two days after Facebook went public, I said, we'll just say, I said something like, who needs a website? And this is the message I got back. It said, we shared it to 500 of your likes. For five dollars, we'll share to five hundred more of your likes. Oh. And I was like, "What? They've already liked it." So next day, you know, who needs SEO? It says we shared it to two hundred and fifty of your likes. Oh. For five more dollars, we'll share it to five hundred of your your likes. So you like my page, and it's not even showing it to you. Uh. All the way wow. till it became this point. I, I we saved this page for this purpose alone. <laughs> so. I don't know if you can see right now. <laughs> this is dormant. There's still 3,800 likes, right? I'm going to go into insights. As this loads, the last time we posted something, I remember we changed the name almost three years ago. 3,800 likes, right? The last time we posted something, how many people did it show it to? Seven. Seven. Oh, All these people wow. liked our page, mm. and it only showed it to seven people. This is how they justify it. They said, well, if people like, comment, or share for free, we'll show it to more people. And so as long as people were like, comment, and sharing, it, you know, if, you, if I share it, it'll show it to you three. You guys all make comments, it'll show it to 10 more people, and then 10 more. Well, and then they're like, well, we'll show it to even more. It might show it to 40,000. Well, really, how much dialogue is there to be about a website, or an auto repair, or a cleaning product? I mean, there's only, I mean, there's just no reason to talk. And this is not us, this is everyone that this is happening to. And what the, the fine line, they, haven't, they won't release it, but we found the fine line is right around 500. What I mean by that is people are like, oh, I have 80 likes and it shows it to all of them. Well, they basically, the, the borderline is right when you hit 500, they consider you like a business, you know, successful, and then they start penalizing you. Mm. So the more likes you get, you're basically being penalized. Mm. So it's like, oh great, I got 510 likes now. It's like, and now it's only showing it to 10 people. All of you should claim your Facebook page. For let me go through the reasons. One, it's free. And two, it's authoritative link. What I mean by that? Here's your website, and every time you have a, a, another site linked to it, it moves you up. Well, give me old SEO things. Five years ago, you could come to a company like us, and we'd get you 500 links from the Philippines and we'd link these no-name fake sites and link them to your website and it would lift you up. And Google goes, whoa, 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 whoa. about three years, shame on you. <laughs> these are just like fake websites. <laughs> so what they said is we want authoritative links, meaning credible places. And Facebook, even if you're not active on your Facebook, <clears throat> it's authoritative link. So setting up your business page, it helps you rank higher. Setting up your Twitter, even if you never tweet for the rest of your life, it helps your website rank higher. So the third reason is claiming your digital assets. If you want to know another business, and I'm not picking, I'm just picking overseas people. This is a business. So let's say oh, we set up Oski Blue. We, we go by the domain name, and if we don't claim our Facebook, our Twitter, or YouTube, probably within about two months, all of a sudden we're like, you know, we should set up a Facebook page. 
and we go type in OSCE Blue, and it's already taken. And someone already has OSCE Blue Facebook page. And uh, yeah, someone from the Philippines goes, oh, I'll sell it to you for $500. Right? You're not even doing anything with it. So what, th there's software out there that they see who's buying domains, and then they go buy your other digital assets so that one day they can sell them to you. Because I could think if you all said business, I can go set up your Facebook you know, for free, and then you go, well, I want everything to match, and then I'll charge you. And so, but if you do it within the first two or three weeks, you'll own all your digital assets. And a, a fourth, I didn't have to find out, but fourth, um, so if you type in OSCE Blue, our website pulls up, um, our Facebook page, our LinkedIn profile, Chamber, YouTube, our Yelp, our Twitter account, our Pinterest, our Thumbtack, our Vimeo, our Google Plus. What we're doing, and I see this all the time, people will come into us and they'll have um, Frisco Plumbing. And you know that's their company, you type in, they pop up number one. But because they haven't claimed any of their social media, when you type in the word plumbing, it's still gonna pull up all your other plumbing people. So yes, they pull up number one, but then all these other plumber companies pull up two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you don't want, I don't want people to search for Oski Blue that right after our website, it pulls up all our competitors. Mm -hmm. So for no other reason, claim your digital assets so that you own when people search you. A lady called me yesterday, um, she uh, is a realtor and she had someone write something really nasty on it, I think it's called um, open glass, what do they call it? Some of you might know that. Glass door. Glass door, and someone, she wrote something really nasty about her, so when you search her name, it's like her website, and right next to the big thing is this, like, <laughs> nasty, review. nasty, nasty review. So she asked us, she's like, well, can you claim all my other stuff? Because they're more authoritative links, and it will push that nasty review to page two. And so that's another reason. Claim the things that you can control. Hmm. I mean, so anyways, that's the purpose, purpose behind that. All right, now are we all in love with Facebook? <laughs> there, there, there still is. There still is a use for Facebook. I know uh, photographers have great success with mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, realtors, if used correctly, I, uh, you know, it's you're part of a, a neighborhood uh, Facebook page, mm -hmm. and that's a, for for any, almost any business. I've seen it on ours. You know, the neighborhood mm -hmm. I live in. Someone goes, does anyone know a plumber? And someone's like, oh, I'm a plumber in the neighborhood. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. a photographer. Um, you know, I I paint homes, and so there there there's a reason to be on Facebook if you use it correctly. But it, it, was, it was this myth, five, six years ago, people would come to you like, man, if you get 10,000 likes, your business will take off and you'll make you know, $10,000 a month and all your problems are solved. It's not like that. It's, uh, there's a lot more work that goes into it. And managing it. If you're going to be posting stuff, tell me one more negative story. If you're, if you're going to be posting on Facebook, make sure that you're, you're actually following it. So there was this uh, company, this attorney, and it wasn't one of our clients. We, it was kind of funny. Well, I don't want to say it's funny. Uh, outside <laughs> looking in. And he, he hired a company to like post for him on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And um, the guy he had, it was this large attorney firm. On Christmas Eve, he says, I hope everyone has a happy Xmas. Mm -hmm. So what's wrong with that? It says happy Xmas. Mm -hmm. And because I guess he was Jewish, I believe, he got bombarded with people saying, are you not a Christian? How can you not you know, include the word Christ? And, oh, and so this is Christmas Eve. And I, you know, I just happened to be watching the feed. And he spent his whole Christmas Eve, whole Christmas day, literally just like trying to stop the bombardment. Hey, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I mean, here's a mm. guy, family of three, just spent the whole day just trying to like recover from the post that he did. Mm. So you gotta be, we just live in a world where everyone has this power. It just takes one person to just give their opinion of it. So there's another reason I just caution you when you're, if that's gonna be your aggressive marketing approach, that you're at least following it. I mean, simplest thing you could have done. It, what's funny, you didn't realize you could have just closed the post and deleted it all, but. Um, and it solved that problem. What our best business model is, is bringing in interns and finding where they fit in best. Um, we uh, give the, I, one I love the most is our bus driver. He, went, he just graduated from UNT. He got a degree in English and in music. And he is our best programmer. Okay? <laughs> Hands down, I, I think he's amazing. And what it was is he was a bus driver, 
and he goes, you know what, I just want to learn about websites. I'm sorry, I have no experience in it. You know, I just graduated with a degree in English and music, but um, I saw you're doing an internship. So he came in, and we're willing to take a risk because it, it was an unpaid internship. You know, it's like, hey, come in for a month or three months. And within a month, because he didn't have some of like people thought they already were like um, an opinion on where how they should develop things, <laughs> he was kind of just an open book. Basically, just tell me what I need to do. And he just absorbed everything we did better, rather than he goes, well, my book told me to do this. <laughs> and he did. And he goes, well, well, I read this. And it was like, this guy's just like, all right, you're my book. And so he just, his, he excelled because he just go, whatever you tell me to do, I'll do that. And now he is awesome. So our philosophy is we'll bring people in. We, we were like, all right, well, we'll just let you come and just kind of watch. And we didn't know if he'd be a project manager, a web developer. Uh, he might be a graphic artist. And so we try to bring it in, and we, we, we're, we've been blessed with enough business that we can like let you try out a few different things. Mm -hmm. And wherever they gravitate and start excelling at, we, we all right, let's give them more of that work. And if they excel, then like, we offer them a job. So that's been a, a great business model for us. Um, I know not everyone's in a position to do that, but um, that's been phenomenal. Um, we have 26 on payroll, uh, 12 that are actually in, in our office. And then we have people in two in Las Vegas, uh, one in North Carolina, uh, one in Utah, um, one in Wyoming, uh, because we, we have like eight article writers, so we just find good articles, writers all over the U.S. that we write about 240 blogs a month. Um, and so we just find people that are good writers, and then so we go. So about 12 here locally, I uh, know 15, because we have some of them, but we let them work from home, so about 15 locally. Is that more important than marketing? What's that? The blog part of your work. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of our clients give you just us. We build websites, we do SEO, and we do software development. But with SEO, some of the best tools are blogging and YouTube videos. Uh, Google just kind of absorbs that and loves it, and those are one of the best ways to get your website to rank higher. Does it matter if it's WordPress? WordPress Google, uh, if, if I had it, I might be a little biased, but WordPress is the best. But there's two ways to skin a cat. But Google really, really likes WordPress. It's open source, it's easy to read for, for Google's to come back, and it's, it's wonderful. So yes, I recommend it. For employers and partners that are hesitant or have a stigma against hiring community college students, what would you tell them, or what, what have, have you found in your own experience working with um, uh, associate certificate degree holders? Um, we might be a little different. Us, personally, we don't hold that. I mean, it's more, we love people who, uh, some of these are some, if you want to know our company personally, and I'll try to answer that question, we love people that type fast. I'll be very upfront. We just found that we live in a world where you do need to type fast. And I'm a terrible typer. So that might not be, you know, I type 35 words per minute. Jeff types right around 80 words per minute. The client, the staff we hire, we love them to at least type over 50. So that's one thing we look for. I mean, over what you're saying, um, I go, do you type fast? And then probably, uh, it's not mandatory, but good people skills is great. Yeah. I have been shocked where we're like, man, you've got such a great skill set, but you're not communicating with our client well. And so what happens is we have this amazing graphic artist. I mean, her resume was awesome. And we hired her, and we end up having to hire someone to just be a liaison between her and the people. No, it's true. I mean, she's just she did all this great work. She like she like put put appointments off because she didn't want to talk to the client. And like, oh, God, she's so good. We hired an employee so that she wouldn't have, she would basically look at the work and she would actually talk on the phone to our clients. And now it's like, well, now we're paying for her. And the only reason we're paying you is because she won't talk to him. And so, and you think it's crazy. I, it happens a lot. And so, we're like, our two things is like, can you hold the conversation and can you type fast? Those are, those are almost A1 and A2. And then I'll look at your other things. Um, wow. I mean, it just, and I see a lot more businesses going that way. I mean, I work at, oh where our office building is, is um, it's called Jaeger Opera Suites. There's about 80 businesses in there. Um, and, you know, so we, we have a lot of dialogue just saying, what are you looking at? It's probably a consensus across the board. It's like, I just want someone that, like, can type fast and can just, like, talk on the phone with someone. I mean, that's, it's all the way across the board because at some point, and we, even though, you know, it might be 80%, if we have to pay for someone because you can't do a training call at the end of the day, I was like, we'd rather have someone with less skills that we're not having to hire another employee so that they can make that call for you. What do you think drove that? Social media? 
Yeah, yes. No, really, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think our communication skill has diminished drastically. Um, How can educational institutions better foster those skills? What are some ideas you have for that? Um, I think some of the classes that need to be important are communication classes. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be way up there. Are we starting it again? You know, it's, uh, and I, I'm not trying to, because of the atmosphere I'm in, I mean, it's good to learn history and mathematics, and I am grateful for those classes. But it, it was my communications class that really excelled me and anyone. I mean, I mean, look at that, our bus driver. He's excelling because he can, he has no problem getting on the phone. It's not, he's not selling, that's by the way. It's not you have to be a salesperson. We're not asking to sell anything. The whole, all we're asking is to get on the phone and say, your design's done. Okay, you want this move? Oh my God. <laughs> I, you think that's crazy, but some people just aren't comfortable with it because we'll always have a little tension. You know, their communications class is when well, they'll get someone that says, "Oh, I don't like it." They're not mad; they just say, "I don't like it." But there are individuals going; they take it personally. <laughs> and all they're saying is, "I don't like it." Try something else. No, no offense taken, but they're like, "Oh, it just eats me up. I don't want to ever talk to someone. I never want anyone to tell me they don't like something of mine." <laughs> it's not that they, they don't get in fights with people, but it's just so how they can foster that. Communications needs to be a lot bigger. Um, uh, part of it, um, and I think there needs to be more hands-on experience. Um, I mean, our, it's amazing, I mean, our best ones are ones that are just like, you can look at it two ways, just open-minded, or almost have a lack of knowledge so that we're training them. Because in any field you're gonna go in, they just need to, even though you learn a, a, a technique, you still, you need to learn it their way or at least be open to learning it that way. And maybe they just need to express that, saying, hey, whatever field you're gonna go into, they might teach you a different way to do this. Just because this, you know, you, we both get two plus two equals four, well, the other company might do one plus three, and it equals four. And so you gotta be prepared to do, do math their way, even though you'll get to the same end. Is that, that's, yeah. that's what I want to What I wanna teach you is how to beef up your LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. from two different aspects that you can educate people and to create healthier relationships. You know, I tell people, Facebook, you know, there's Facebook, and then LinkedIn is social media for grown-ups. <laughs> I mean, it's what it is. It's, it's a tool, when my daughter turns 18, the first thing I'm gonna do is set her up with the LinkedIn profile, because it doesn't matter what company you work for, when you move, you get to take your LinkedIn profile with you. Right. So it's this digital asset that the more you monetize it, or optimize it, you can monetize it and take it to other places. So I wonder if he's touch on that. I'm not in the job market, but this is what most people would put on their LinkedIn. Does anyone not have a LinkedIn profile? All right, good. So we shall have a LinkedIn profile. So no shame on you. So this is what most people would put. You know, owner at Oski Blue, sales manager at Oski Blue. Um, you know, that's what most people would Or, you know, bank teller at Bank of America. Notice I don't mention Oski Blue one time because LinkedIn, it's a search engine and people aren't searching for Oski Blue. Mm -hmm. What are they searching? Google Plus, SEO management, public speaking, SEO. So this carries a lot of weight on how you rank in, in, uh, on LinkedIn. And so I put keywords that I want to be found for. So if you want to be found for project manager or university development uh, services, you want to put it up there. And if you want to learn real quick code, all you do is if you notice how I put up there, I put keyword, you know, whatever your keyword is, space, pipe, space, keyword. And let me tell you, so how to get that pipe signal, I don't know if you have a laptop in front of you, but if, if we had a laptop here, or I mean a keyboard, there's the backspace button right here. Right below it is the key to make the, the pipe symbol. All right, what you're doing, is you're telling Google, this is a key phrase, and this is a new key phrase. Because the wrong way to do it would be like, um, let's say you're uh, house cleaning. You put house, house cleaning in Frisco, I'm just gonna put Frisco, comma, Plano, comma, Little Elm, comma, Prosper. Well, Google, it's not Google's job or LinkedIn to go, oh, you do house cleaning, in Frisco, house cleaning in Prosper, house cleaning Little Elm, it doesn't read it that way. So what it needs to do is you would put house cleaning Frisco space pipe space house cleaning Prosper 
space, pipe space, house cleaning in, in Carrollton. And then Google goes, that's a keyword or a key phrase. And it, you'll, you'll rank a lot higher. And, and the thing I love about LinkedIn is Google, I always tell people, when we do this, it takes three to four months to get you to the top. If you were to do these things tonight, it will take effect the next day. So I've seen people that they, they go and optimize their profile and the next day they're at the top of LinkedIn searches. Mm -hmm. So there's not like a waiting period. Mm -hmm. So you want to go put in these keywords that you want to rank for, because this carries a lot more weight than the lower spots. I'm trying to get a job in um, commercial real estate. Well, rather than putting bank teller at Chase Bank, you might put uh, relationships in the community, space, pipe, space. Um, uh, involved in parks and recreation, space, pipe, space. I mean, I'm thinking off the cuff. Because what you're doing, you know, and then I would put down here, <coughs> rather than saying, oh, I help people, you know, deposit money, I would say, when people came to the bank, I would tell, talk to them about the parks and the community and the school districts. And those keywords match up with what you're trying to get into. Does that make sense? So you don't, I mean, you kind of put in the keywords that you want to be found for. So you can't do this with Google. You can't, uh, it's called keyword stuff. If you put the same keyword multiple times, you can get penalized. LinkedIn, there's no penalty. So you can put the keyword as many times you want. So you can put, um, I'm learning to, to learning cybersecurity. I, one of the best parts of cybersecurity is what I learned at Colin Ca College County in March when I was studying cybersecurity. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but all it does is the bottom's fluff. When, when, a, when a headhunter or a staffing agency, they just search cybersecurity and they just see your top part pull up and then you're, you're kind of in play. But if you never get pulled up, you're never in play. So the bottom is literally just fluff in there. Um, so you want to, really in the bottom of it, you want to keyword stuff. Uh, a good example, 12, 14, 12 years ago, I, I sold alarms door to door. And selling alarms door to door has nothing to do with SEO, right? Nothing to do with website development. So if I scroll down where I said I did alarms, I said, while I was selling alarms, I noticed people that had great SEO and had good looking uh, website development, ranked high on Google and got a lot of business. So if you notice, what I, most people would put is, oh, I sold uh, alarms door to door, learned Honeywell products, you know, home protection, but those aren't keywords I want to rank for. So I talked about my time as an opportunity to put in those keywords. Does that make sense? So I'm just like, oh, while I was doing it, I love learning about this other thing, this other thing. Because it really is, it's a numbers game. Google, to give you an idea, if you want to, people are writing, you want to pick your top five keywords and they need to be on your profile at least 20 times. Is building up these skills and endorsements. Everyone familiar with these? Uh -huh. yeah. I'm telling you, I use this as a closing tool now. Yeah. Before, sorry, I'm congesting. Before I would, um, uh, clients would come to us like, hey, can you give me five references of clients you've worked with? And so we'd give them some of our top clients. And one time I had this doctor call me. And he goes, John, I love you guys, love your service, but don't tell anyone ever to call me again. <laughs> and, uh, well, no, because someone called. Yeah, it takes His time's valuable, and someone just called and said, like, what do you think of Oski Blue? What's your experience? What's been the turnaround? How would you rate them on 10 to 10? And he's kind of like, I'm not getting paid for this. Like, yeah, they're good. Like, and he wanted to just hang up. And he's like, dude, they're asking way too many questions. Um, and he just, it was kind of annoyed. So what I do now, when someone goes, hey, can you give me three or five recommendations? I say, go to my LinkedIn profile, scroll down to skills and endorsements, and you can see a few people have endorsed me or, endorsed me or our company for what we do. And they'll come here and they'll see, I actually lowered them, you'll see they're actually down here, like 99 for online marketing, 99 SEO. And they'll go, great, I'm good to go. Because people give this a lot of, validation or credibility. It's not like a Facebook like. Oh, you have 10,000 Facebook likes, you must be good. No, they, they, this carries a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And so, if you go from one company to another, it usually will stay somewhat in compliance. If you're, if you're in sales or marketing or customer service, a lot of these will transition job to job. Some of those might change, but answering his question, I don't want to forget. I don't think it's the case, but I still always bring it up. So I teach unemployment classes and um, one thing you want to do, before you make changes, go to the far right, hover over your head, and if you don't have a headshot, you need to get one. I'm just telling you, I can't tell you people, you, you have no chance if you aren't going to put up your headshot. So I scroll down, oh, 
headshot. Scroll down to privacy and settings. Right there, right below the yellow button, do you see where it says turn on and off activity broadcast? <laughs> Click that. And let me tell you why. For two purposes. If you're leaving a job, Every time you make an update, it makes that notification to the whole world. That's right. Oh, okay. That's so true. if you're making these edits, That's true. and you're like, oh, great. I mean, I can't tell you people that have HR departments are like, hmm, you're here, but why are you beefing up your LinkedIn profile? Oh, yeah. For only one reason, because you're trying to leave that company. I mean, that's the only reason you're really beefing up your LinkedIn profile. And so it's a huge red flag. So if you click that button, you can make all your updates and then turn it back on, and no one knows that you beefed it up. Good. But the, the searches will find you ranking higher. Just I, I hate I, I see it happen in businesses that are like, oh hey, what are you doing? <laughs> if if you're if you're trying to look for a job and be active, I think you should be on it every three to five days. If you're, I mean, that's just during that period. It might be a month that you're looking for work. If you're happy with it, I think you should check it once a month because it, it, I mean, think of it as your digital asset. Uh, you just never know. I I, I have people go, hey, I. I've been in my same job for 20 years, and all of a sudden, they, you know, they lose their job, and it looks like, I mean, they look like an eight-year-old kid, oh, and, and profile-wise, like, they have no endorsements, it's just, it's really sloppy, there's nothing there, and it's just a really weak profile. And you think of it as you've got to invest, I mean, it's your asset. I mean, I think it was a, you know, that life insurance or something. I need to know that if my partner, Troy or Jeff, want to fire me tomorrow, I feel comfortable because I have this asset I can, you know, present to people in the future. I mean, it's free. I mean, take it, you know, just miss one King of Queens episode and walk <laughs> out 30 minutes and then do it during that time. I appreciate it. I think. Uh, oh, I appreciate it. Thank you for all you. Did.